so we're going to be talking about most of the integration, and there's going to be a nice chat between this as well and this as well. But let us introduce ourselves first. My name is uh, Julio Fernandez, and this is my Twitter handle. I'm a senior uh, application developer, and I've got about more than six years experience with Salesforce, and I work for uh, Designing, which is a UK uh, company based in Bristol. Although I'm based in Spain myself, in Seville, so I work remotely and I travel there and back and And I'm quite involved in the community as well. I run the Seville Developers Group, and I am one of the organizers of uh, Freeconnect, the community event in Spain. Okay, and uh, I'm uh, yeah, Jeremy Aaron. I'm one of the senior partners at Design It's in Bristol. My background is largely in uh, data integration, but on a large scale using Java applications. Um, I dabble with Salesforce a bit, uh, but I'm certainly not an expert. Um, but in terms of the agenda for today. Yeah, so we're going to start uh, justifying why we need integrations. Uh, we're going to carry on with uh, an overview of the integration options that Salesforce offers. Uh, followed by an introduction to what Microsoft uh, Enterprise is, and we're going to finish with uh, a couple of examples. So, why do we need integrations? Uh, if this works, so yeah. we live in a world where we have multiple systems, multiple devices, uh, APIs, and they all do a very good job. They are they are expert on their area. And uh, from your end, you don't necessarily need to implement everything that other people do well. So uh, that's where integration comes in. Uh, you just take advantage of communicating to other systems and uh, just uh, taking the bits you need from, from them. Think about a taxi ride experience 20 years ago. And nowadays, 20 years ago, you would have to make a phone call, get the taxi, the taxi would take you to a place, they would give you a receipt, you have to pay. And nowadays, you think you do everything in one go just uh, from, from your telephone. So that's a very good example of uh, taking advantage of multiple integrations at the same time. Okay, so what, what do you get with Salesforce out of the box when it comes to integration? Uh, obviously, a big part of Salesforce is the point and click um, way of doing things, and there's various things you can use like Salesforce Connect, uh, external objects, Heroku Connect, and the external services wizard. Well, maybe those are kind of used for, for the more simple integrations. If you need more complex solution, you can drop down into, into code, uh, and there's a number of APIs, uh, you know, the REST SOAP, bulk streaming APIs you can use. You can create an, a an Apex class that's an endpoint for REST service, uh, or you can use HTTP callouts. And then further to that, there are things like platform events, uh, the IoT Explorer and the Change Data Center, um, where you can combine, yeah, they're a mixture of the two, so you have a bit of uh, clicks config and then some code to back that up. Um, <clears throat> which brings us on to, to MuleSoft, um, the reason we're here. Uh, it's one of the more recent additions to the Salesforce family. Um, it's described as providing like an API-led uh, connectivity. Uh, and by that we mean you know, the, the tool understands the APIs for a wide range of systems and applications and, and protocols. Um, allows you to, to uh, utilize that knowledge to create uh, integrations between various different platforms and different systems without having to understand the details of those APIs. Uh, it does that providing, by providing a number of reusable components. Uh, most of these are connectors to a number of different systems, some in the cloud, some on-premise. Uh, and also, um, over the years with data integration, there's been a number of, of common, um, common uh, requirements that have been identified uh, and codified as patterns, and there'll be components to help you implement those kind of standard integration patterns. Um, and the fact that you use these reusable components means that once you've got a grip on, uh, on how to use the tool, you can, you can uh, integrate various different systems together using a consistent way. Um, so you say, as I said, you don't have to in, in, uh, understand the, the details of each, uh, of each system. And uh, how does MuleSoft provide the API that by means of the connectors. Uh, just, just by downloading the on-premise uh, solution or by logging to the cloud uh, version of the platform, you have access to a number of out-of-the-box connectors. So you, you can have uh, integration with uh, modern technologies like Amazon Web Services, Salesforce, Slack, etc. Uh, but also to some not so modern technologies. So you can send emails, you can connect to any database, and those are provided to you out-of-the-box. 
And uh, when you combine them, so you have a meal application. So a meal application is a bundle of all of the other box components uh, talking to multiple systems, and that builds uh, onto a meal application. Uh, this is a screenshot of uh, the Anypoint Design Center, which is the cloud-based uh, solution, and it's an example of multiple uh, connectors uh, building uh, a meal a meal software. And then uh, MuleSoft also has its own, its very own app exchange. It's a, this is a repository that you can use to upload your, your own uh, applications so that you can share them with other members of your team. And it also has publicly accessible uh, applications that some people may have built and shared with everyone. So if it's already there and it meets your uh, criteria, you can just read it every and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Okay, so when we're looking at uh, an integration thing, what do, what do we actually mean? Um, at the end of the day, we're just transforming data, which basically means taking data from one format, converting it to another, in, in order to load it into a target system. I mean, that, that transformation might just be a simple thing of mapping one system to another, so you might have a name field, or a field called name in one system, and it's company name in another, so you have to specify which, uh, uh, what, what the which field it gets mapped over to which, or there may be some more complicated um, scenarios, things like you know, if you have a group of companies, each with a list of accounts, uh, you might take those and then merge them together to create one, you know, one uh, final list for the whole group. Um, but things like data aggregation, if you've got a, a list of new leads, you might want to go off to and extract data from a third party company to provide extra information to, to give you a decision as to whether these people are, are worth dealing with. Uh, similarly with enrichment summarization, you may have a, a, a list of opportunities and want to have totals um, uh, by account over a period of time and filtering, uh, again, list of accounts, you might only want to have certain of those uh, being brought over into the target systems. Um, your integration may be simple or it may be a combination of a whole number of things. You can build very complicated, complex uh, integration solutions using MuleSoft. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, all you're doing is extracting data from one or more systems, doing some kind of transformation and loading it into uh, one or more target systems. Uh, and you'll see the, the term ETL uh, banded around in this scenario. It just stands for extract, track, transform, and load. Um, in, in the demo, uh, we will be get, work doing a, a fairly basic transformation, but there isn't the time to go into any more detail, I'm afraid. So here goes uh, live demo. Let's see, let's see how we get on. Live demo. Live demo. Uh, right. Okay. So here we have. Um, uh, this is the AnyPoint uh, Studio, this is the on-premise platform. Anyone who's done any Java development might recognize this as the Eclipse um, IDE. Um, and uh, it is, uh, so here, just give you a brief overview. Here you have various config files to do with your project within MuleSoft. Uh, the main workspace area here is where you do, do the main bulk of your work. Uh, and over the top here we have a, uh, uh, this is your library of components. So if we're looking for a load of Salesforce ones, so these are components for doing different actions within Salesforce, um, you might want to uh, just have various generic database you know, uh, things, or if you're looking to access files from your file system, again, there's, there's a whole load of components for doing a number of different things. What we have here is a job defined, uh, and what this will do, will uh, it will take it will check for a CSV file. Um, if, you, if you imagine that you have a legacy system that you can't integrate directly with, it outputs a CSV file of accounts. Um, we want to read those, check, check for any, any updates, read those files, um, and, and move them into Salesforce. So what we do here, we have a, uh, I'll just go at the bottom. For each component, there's a configuration section at the bottom of the screen. Um, so for this scheduler, we have it's going to check every 10 seconds the file that's on it that's, uh, that should be there. We're going to read. When it fires, we'll read a CSV file. So we've defined the file. Uh, so that's the file it's going to read. And then we can define, tell MuleSoft what the structure of that file is. So here we have uh, MuleSoft has, has read the CSV file and identified that these are the field names uh, in the file. Uh, and here we got it so that this component is reading this expected format and then passing the same format onto the next, the next component. Moving on from there, what we're going to do is 
write, the, write each record out to a log. So every time we process the file, we're going to read the data and write it out into a log file just so we can check that it's going through and processing each time. Um, at this point, um, part of our transformation, we want to apply an exchange rate uh, to, to the revenue. Um, in this case, we're just defining that as a fixed, a fixed value, but we could be going and retrieving that off uh, from, a, from, a, from another system uh, or from the web or somewhere. But for simplicity, we're just having this. Uh, these, the first three, the read, input logger, and, X, and the, the exchange rate setting, can be taken as the, um, uh, as the ex extract part of this job. In the transform part here, we're just mapping um, between the input CSV file and the, and the account record within Salesforce. And if we look here, it is uh, MuleSoft knows the format of the, of the input file that we've got. Uh, and here we've got all the fields within the account object in Salesforce. And it is for each field you can say so for which field it ends up with. So here we have the, the act name being passed to the name field. Uh, the site goes to the, the site. Uh, billing state goes to the billing state and that kind of thing. So you can, yeah, you can just a drag and drop map between, between the different things. But not only that, rather than just copying fields directly, what we can also do is, is apply a little some processing. So in this case, the name is being converted to uppercase. And the, the, F, the, the revenue field from the, from the uh, CSV file is being multiplied by the exchange rate uh, to, give the, to give the amount in the currency that we want to import into Salesforce. And finally, we have uh, an upset um, component. So this will um, upset the, the records into Salesforce, into the account object, uh, and we can define the connection details uh, for the Salesforce uh, by specifying the username, password, and a security token uh, within the project. So once we define that, well, then we can use that across a number of different um, Salesforce components without having to specify that each time. Uh, okay, so here we have, this is the file that the, the jobs is, has been reading. It's an empty file at the moment, and we have a list of accounts in Salesforce, standard dev org. Uh, you're probably all familiar with, uh, with, the, with the names there. Uh, and what we can do is pick those, pick a number of records, and put them in. And if we save that, here we have a job running. Uh, it's been running for a few minutes, and each blank line is where it's pulling in. So OK, it's, it's read that file. It's, it's, it's uh, written the records to the log file. And now, live demo nerves here. It should have added them, added them into Salesforce. It's changed the name to uppercase, uh, and it's multiplied the, uh, the amounts by 1.25. What else we can do is, just to show that it is a genuine live demo, is add a new record. Yeah, this is where it, this is where it goes horribly wrong. Uh, five and change the name of that one to. Uh, I don't care about typing; it's a live demo. And let's just wait till it's wait till it's gone through. Uh, okay, yeah, that's gone through, and now we can uh, check that. So see. A very simple job to then link through for between a CSV file and Salesforce. Um, and uh, as you can see, yes, we currently all these records will be created by Salesforce dog, which will be relevant for the next for the next demo. And yeah. I will pass you back to uh, uh, okay. It's now. Yeah. So now we're going to see how our Salesforce dog admin from Salesforce can get some communication down to uh, the Salesforce Cloud channel that we have in Slack. Uh, we're going to do this uh, from the, uh, the online version of, uh, any, uh, of MuleSoft, which is the, the MuleSoft, pla uh, MuleSoft uh, Anyone platform, sorry. So this is the design center, and uh, you have access to the app exchange, the, the, the app exchange here, and uh, you have a list of uh, the, just the projects that you have. So this is our Mule, Mule, Mule application. And uh, we're going to be connecting to Salesforce, looking for opportunities created by Salesforce Dog. And uh, once they are created, we're going to want those uh, communications to be notified to uh, Salesforce Cloud channel. 
channel that we've created in the Europe Picking uh, Slack. So uh, we're going to be doing this with two simple components. This is a very simple configuration, but it's very powerful because uh, you'll see that it's very easy to, to do. The first component is uh, configuring is a Salesforce connector uh, that reads a new 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 record creation, and uh, you just need to configure the connection to Salesforce doc. Uh, again, this is very similar to the on-premises uh, uh, version of uh, MuleSoft, so you just notify the credentials, and then you say that this is uh, an opportunity what you want to read, and it's on creation of, of new records. It's going to be reading that for uh, every five seconds. And then the second part of the integration is the Slack uh, connector. This is going to post messages into the, the Slack channel that we're going to um, configure. So we configure the parameters, we're just saying that it's the Salesforce Slack channel, and we want to modify, uh, we want to just notify the message with some clapping and some messages, and then the, the name of the, of the opportunity that's been created. And uh, you can also apply some transformations here. So you can see that there's a number of uh, functions and uh, you can have more details about the uh, data wave language that Microsoft uses for, for these type of transformations. And the configuration to Slack cut is made by a token. So you go to Slack and you get the, the, the token and uh, that's enough for you to communicate. Uh, this is running, so let's just create a new opportunity. Okay, so hopefully you get an idea that this is uh, it is fairly straightforward to to create uh, integrations with MuleSoft. Um, but how then? Uh, how do you take that further? Get involved and uh, and uh, take your your immense excitement forward uh, to develop new new uh, solutions. Um, obviously, there are there are various uh, MuleSoft uh, meetup groups uh, all over the world. There are a number in Europe. There's one in Amsterdam. If anyone's interested, um, some are, some are quite. Um, as well established, others are fairly uh, fairly new, um, but yeah, find find one. Uh, if there isn't one, start one uh, and get together with other people uh, and share ideas. Uh, there also is a very good um, developer blog about getting started with MuleSoft on Salesforce. Um, that was a very good use for us for for starting to do these demos. Um, on Trailhead, there's a um, data integration specialist uh, super badge, which gives you a broad uh, introduction to to um, to integration. Uh, but there's also a, uh, a, a MuleSoft-specific trail coming. I'm not sure if it's ready yet, but it's certainly on the way. And also, um, to getting actually hold of the uh, MuleSoft uh, tools themselves, um, they offer a 30-day free trial. What, you've, what we've demoed with today, or just, or just the, the, the software that's available um, for, on the 30-day 30, 30 trial, and also there's various quick start um, tutorials uh, on their developer website. Yeah, we didn't pay for anything. And yeah, that's, that's everything from us. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, we'll be I think we have and, uh, maybe a minute or two for, yeah. for any questions, if there are any. Uh, is there a difference between the cloud version and the on-premise version? Okay, so that there's, was... There, a, uh, I was say, just repeat the question. There, there's, is, is there any difference between the cloud version and the on-premise version? Yeah, so there are some components that you can access through from the cloud version, but I guess it's a, um, a journey from going from on-premise to, uh, to the cloud. But you can also have build hybrid, uh, hybrid integrations where 
what you can't do in the cloud, you can do on premises, and then just communicate with the uh, with the with the cloud side. Um, yeah, well, yeah, the other difference is that you need to have a server to, to run your your on premise uh, jobs, and you don't need that for the cloud one. Okay, yeah. there was a question here. Um, da, da, we are, so the question was, what's, what's the benefit of using MuleSoft as opposed to any other uh, competitive um, tools? Uh, we found they're all kind of, I mean, they're all doing the similar th sort of thing in largely a similar way. Um, I would imagine that, that, yep, that Salesforce will integrate MuleSoft a, a more tightly with the platform. Um, but no, there are, there are other tools available that, that are equally as good. Just